All right, this video is gonna be about how to adjust your Edelbrock carburetor. This is one of my favorite carburetors, despite the fact that people don't like them. Honestly, they give up maybe five to 10 horsepower over a Holley, but what they give you in return is street ability and uh, they're not as altitude sensitive from what I've known. I've driven hundreds of thousands of miles on Edelbrocks, so I don't know. I'm just saying, I drive them every day. Now, the biggest issue with them is because they're one piece bowl, they don't have a gasket from the fuel bowl to the main body of the carburetor, so there's a lot of heat transfer, the whole thing. If you touch it and it's not comfortable to touch, like if it's warm, it's good. Warm carburetors are happy. Now, if it's hot to the touch, that means the fuel is gonna be boiling, because fuel boils at like 130 or something, something ridiculously low. So, <coughs> and the engine's gonna be at 200, about 180 to 200 for a happy cast iron engine. So. First things first, um, what I like to do, there are two ways to combat vapor lock or heat soak or whatever. Number one is this thermal gasket that, car, that Edelbrock sells. They sell an open plenum one and they sell a divided one. Um, it's about a quarter inch thick, shouldn't give you too much clearance issues. I've used them to good success and they're great. For example, you know, this was boiling fuel so I put the gasket on there it's 20 to 22 dollars depending where you get it and it comes with studs I bought studs in anticipation of changing it out and uh, as it turns out it came with them number two usually on Pontiacs and some other engines there's an exhaust or a water crossover that boils your carburetor now for the winter that's great but for an Edelbrock a lot of times what you'll do is just get it way too hot because exhaust coming left and right like that it just doesn't bode well for this carburetor so as you can see this is float levels where they were so they were a little low plus it was boiling off some of the fuel um so those two ways you can combat thermal issues with an edelbrock and those are the only two real drawbacks to an edelbrock as far as adjustability goes number one you change the jet size now if you buy a carburetor that's properly sized you're only going to probably be one or two sizes away from optimum and Number two, these metering rods. Now they're two-step. This particular one is 7042, meaning the fat portion of the needle. Let me show you. Sorry. There you go. The fat portion of the needle is what goes in first in the jet, restricting fuel flow. And then when at wide open throttle, when vacuum drops, the spring pushes it up into the narrow portion of the needle. So for example, the way to test these is you roll into the throttle. Let me show you this. So floats, I like to adjust them perfectly level. Now, rule of thumb, when you're putting the cover back on, or the top plate or whatever you wanna call it, make sure the metering rods aren't in there because I've seen, I've bought used carburetors before with bent rods because people just manhandle them. Another thing is remove the accelerator pump because leaving the diaphragm in there it will prevent it from tearing going back and forth now it'll tear anyway usually but not from doing adjustments now these little windows right here are where you put the metering rod in don't forget the springs this particular spring is the silver spring on the calibration kit so you drop them in drop in the metering rods. I bought this carburetor with, this is an example, yours will vary, with, uh, with a 119 jet, and that part number was 419. So that's that's way too big. The, these carburetors come with like a 107 or 110. Uh, right now I put a 110 in it. This is a 383, not the biggest thing in the world got a mild cam and it was running severely rich flooding out the plugs hard to start so the first thing I did is I went from the 6537 metering rod to a 7042 it immediately responded and then after driving it around town noticing a fuel boiling issue I adjusted that I went down from the 119 to the 110 jet now to put it in reference my 68 Firebird has a 461 stroker and it has 113 jets. So a 383 does not need 119s. It's just too much. Um, so 
so if you roll on through the throttle and full throttle is great but you get a little bit of a stumble you'll either running it too rich or too lean now if you're running it too rich and for example if you have a 7042 uh, you can go to a 7342. What that 73, that's the first portion of the thing. That's when you're rolling in if it's already too rich, you know. Now, to keep the accelerator pump from being part of this equation from getting an optimum tune on your carburetor, make sure you're rolling into the throttle from 0% all the way to full throttle. That's the only way to set these up properly. Because if you don't roll into the throttle, then you'll get a a false reading so to speak like it'll act like it's good and it may not be good the reason it may act like it's good is because the accelerator pump just gave it a whole shot of gas and in reality you may be lean you know so if you're coming off out of the light it you might have to feather the clutch and so on because it's going to want to stall so keep that in mind rolling through the throttle now for example rolling through the throttle is perfect and you have a 7042 well That'd be a bad example. Say if you have a 7342, right? And rolling into the throttle, it's perfect, but wide open throttle before it hits the secondaries, there's a stumble, right? So then go down to a 7337. That smaller portion of the needle being going down from a 42 to a 37, what that'll give it is that second stage right before it hits the secondaries. Well, the sec there's three stages. There's a one, two, and the secondaries. So that second stage will give it just a little more fuel because it's a, that much smaller of a needle going to the jets. Um, honestly, I love these carburetors. They work great. So, I mean, there's something to be said about the fact that you can open them up, not have any fuel anywhere, and they're just as adjustable as any Holly. Now, of course, they're not. I mean, wide open throttle. Yeah, there's there's the weighted butterflies and some other stuff that they don't quite flow as well. But from experience, at 400 plus horsepower, under 500, this is the carb to go on a daily to go with on a daily driver because it's just not going to start fires. It's going to run well if you set it up well. A lot of the people that complain about them, they've never ever taken the time to bother setting them up, so keep that in mind. And also, a lot of people that complain about them, they daily drive a fuel-injected car, and they have, you know, a trailer queen track car, so... Is their opinion worth something? Yes. But is it really worth... a lot? No, no, I would take it with a grain of salt, just like anybody else's opinion. So, keep that in mind. Well, y'all have a good day, and hopefully that kind of explains a little bit.